I'm going to show you how to create this animated ribbon with text, all inside After Effects without any plugins. Let's jump in. So we're going to start by creating our main composition, which I'm just going to call main 1920 by 1080 and 10 seconds for me is all fine. And then let's start by grabbing the pen tool. And I'm just going to zoom out so I can see our composition smaller in screen. And then with our pen tool, let's create our ribbon shape. Just something like this, nice and curved and expanding beyond our composition. So you can either adjust your path now or we can come back later and adjust it as well. So up here, we're going to go to our fill and we're going to turn this off. And then our stroke, we're going to leave on, but let's turn that down to one and I'm going to leave it as white. And then let's also call our layer ribbon. And now we want to get our text tool. And just click anywhere and type any text that we want to include on our ribbon. Again, this can be changed later, and I would advise you to pick a font which is quite condensed, just because of the way the ribbon is created, and if the text is, or the letters are too wide, then we will see them turn a corner as it's going around the bend of the ribbon, and it will sort of take away from that effect that we're looking for, but you can update this later. So pick a font, pick your text, I'm just going to copy and then paste lots of times. So we have one really long line of text. And then let's make sure our text layer is selected. And again, grab our pen tool and let's just draw any old shape we can over the top to create a mask. So now when we press M on this layer, we will see a mask. And what we want to do is go to our ribbon and open up our contents, shape one, path one. So we can see our path, which is our ribbon. And then on our text layer, we want to hold Option or Alt and click the stopwatch next to our mask path. And then pick whip to our ribbon path. And now we can click off. And now if we click on our text layer, you will see our mask matches our ribbon, although it is not quite in the correct place. So I am just going to press V on the keyboard. So we have our selection tool and just use the arrows on my keyboard to nudge it so that our mask path lines up with our ribbon path. We won't know exactly if this is right until later, but again, like I said, we can adjust all this later on. So let's just get it roughly on top for now. And just so you know, that was the position of this layer that I was nudging, it wasn't the mask. So our mask path, we can't move because it is linked to our ribbon path. So that was the position of the text layer that I was just nudging with the arrow keys there. And next we can close that up now and that. So what we want to do is open up our text layer, go to text and then our path options. Our path, we want to be our mask one. And then straight away you will see it now follows our ribbon path, but it's not quite on the right orientation. So what we're going to do is next to animate, click this button here, enable per character 3D and click that same button again and this time select rotation. And we want our X rotation to be 90 degrees. So type in 90 and then it will all rotate. So it is following the path at the correct orientation. We can't quite see it because we're at the wrong angle. So to get the angle, let's just close this up and let's create a new null. So go to layer, new null object, make that null 3D and also make our ribbon layer 3D. Select our text layer and our ribbon layer and parent these to our null. And then on our null, let's press R to bring up our rotation. And again, our X rotation, I think we want to be minus something this time. So I'm going to go minus 60 and yeah, that's looking all right. So I'm just going to make that about, let's go about there. And then let's also just press P and let's bring it up in frame as well. I can see I haven't got enough text. So what I'm going to do is grab our text tool again and click inside our text layer. I'm going to do control A to select all of it, copy and then paste and then paste again, just so we now have double the amount of text and it fills our composition as we want it to. So we have our text, but we still can't see our actual ribbon. So on our ribbon layer, which is actually going to be the physical ribbon that we see, we need to be able to see it. So let's change our classic 3D to advanced 3D. And I know this does create some issues with using track mats, but 
once you've pre-comped this, we can then again open up the ability to use track mat. So don't worry that we're using advanced 3D rather than the classic 3D. But from changing that, we can now go to our ribbon and our geometry options are now open, which allows us to extrude the depth. So I think I need mine to be about 300. Yours might need to be a different amount. And then let's also just move it up so it's in the correct position. Can't see our text, so I'm going to click on our text and change the color to black so we can see it a bit better. And from here, we can see that our text still isn't quite in the right position. So I'm going to click on our text layer. And again, using the arrow keys, I'm going to nudge this until it is covered the area we want it to. Actually, I'm just going to press P and then just change these first two numbers. I think about there is fine. Again, we can change this later. I'm just going to also just nudge up our ribbon slightly so it's got our text centered. And yeah, I'm quite happy with that for now. So while we're in here, let's animate our text. So let's grab our text, go down to text again and our path options where we were earlier. Let's go down to our first margin, make sure our playhead is at the start of our animation, create a keyframe, go to the very end, and then let's ramp this up to something extreme like 500. And then if we play this through, you will see our text is moving along the ribbon. I can see our letters here are intersecting. So again, on our text layer, press P, and let's just keep playing with these numbers until it's correct. Yep, and I think that's about right for the text position. So you probably can't see it here because our background is black, but I'm imagining as our letters are coming around this corner, we're gonna see them overlap around here. So I'm just going to turn off our background and just scrub through. And then you can just about see it. If I just zoom in here, you'll see that our letters aren't actually stuck to the surface and you can see them around here so that's not a problem we can either keep playing with our position until they're as close as they can be or what i usually do and what we're going to do now is create another composition and use it as a mat to chop off anything that is not on the surface of the ribbon so what we're going to do in our project window let's just click our main composition and duplicate and let's call this mat and then open it up and then we can delete our text layer from our matte composition because we don't need that. And before we do anything else to make our lives a lot easier, because we will later on be animating or keyframing the ribbon path, we don't want to have to do that twice. So what we're going to do is go back to our main composition. If you click and drag onto the actual composition name itself, and then drag down and then to the left until it highlights here and let go. We will see our main composition on the left here and then our matte composition on the right here. And if we just open up our contents and our shape path on both, we can then on our or in our matte composition, alt or option click next to our path and then pick whip all the way across the left into our main composition and then drop on our path in there and now we can drag our main composition back so they're back where they should be and now the path in our matte composition is linked to the path in our main composition so in here if i was to click on our path and let's just grab this point for example and move it further over here that will all update in our matte composition so so all we have to do is keyframe it once and it will update across our other compositions as well so let's go to our matte composition and in here, we want to duplicate our main ribbon. And then up here on our stroke, let's just change the color to black. And then you won't see anything because that is intersecting and on top of our original. So let's press P. And then we want to change these first two numbers. I think it's minus one and one. So that is correct. What's meant to happen is it be black on one side and white on the other. And here is where we can see one of the limitations with doing this in After Effects, and that is because of the XY 
Z orientation. There can't be any intersecting of two of those points. It's hard to explain, but what we need to do is, is go back to our main composition and then adjust the path ever so slightly and go back to our mat. You'll see that is now a bit smaller. Move that across there. And what I might do is bring this one about there. Go back to our mat, almost there. And there we go. So that is something you need to keep in mind when you're animating that you'll, you will need to keep jumping back and forth between to make sure that there is no intersection in our matte layer. And that is the one annoying thing with doing this in After Effects is that there is limitations. You can't have the sweeping ribbon come back in itself too much or the, these two layers will intersect. However, I've done this black and white front and back because I want something different on the front and back of my ribbon. If you want yours to, like in our main composition, if you don't want to have a separate front and back and you can just see the back of the text, then that's fine. You can just not have this black layer and you can do anything you want with your path. But because I want a different front and back, I do need this black layer on top. So it's just something to keep in mind. And now all we need to do is up in our project panel, let's drag our main composition into a new composition. Let's just call that ribbon. And then also let's drag in our mat. And then on our main layer, go to our track mat and let's select that mat layer. And now none of our text, if I just zoom in here, none of our text should go out too far from our ribbon. And I can see it is ever so slightly coming out. And I think that is because in our mat we did the minus one one. So it has this black layer has come forward slightly. So what I might do is go rather than minus one one go one minus one so the black should now jump to the back and because i want black on the front i'm just going to swap our colors around so i'm going to turn that one white and this one black so now i'm going to go back to our ribbon there you go our text no longer comes off at all so that's exactly what we wanted to happen and we're almost there so now what we're going to do is up here in our project panel again. We could duplicate our main, but because our mat already has the path linked to our main layer, the expression exists. So let's duplicate that. Let's call that back. And this is going to be the back of our ribbon. So let's open that up. And let's just delete that second ribbon layer. We only need the one. And let's change this color to anything we want to have on the back of our ribbon. So I'm just going to pick blue for now. Go back to our ribbon. And then let's drag in our back. Let's drag it on the very top. And again, let's select our mat. But this time here, we want to click this button here to turn it from an alpha to a luma mat. And that will only be looking at the white, or if you click the button next to it to invert it, it will be looking at the black. We do want the white because that is the back. And you will see that the black white luma mat isn't quite perfect. It's more of a gray. So we are seeing a bit of our text beneath. So to sort that out, let's go to our mat layer and let's just add a levels effect. So let's add that. Let's just drag this all the way to the left and then this one all the way to the left as well. And that will just, if I turn on our mat layer, make our whites really white and our blacks really black. So if I turn it off, you see it's a bit of gray, it's got a bit of a gradient even, a bit of a shadow, and turn it on, and that goes to pure white. So it'll make our luma mat work a lot better. So now we have a front and back of our ribbon. The back can be updated in our back composition, and in our main, we can change our text, we can change the path, and the color of this ribbon layer is the color of the front of our ribbon. So now I'm just gonna change that color back to white. So now what we can do in our main composition, at the very start, we can make a keyframe on our path and go to the very end. And then we can change and play with our path. And then while we're here, let's just go to our mat and make sure that there's no intersecting happening at the end, which there is. So I just need to make sure on this last keyframe, I probably have to move that along a bit like that to our mat and there we go 
So now when I play this through, our text is animating and the shape of our ribbon path is also animating. So you may have noticed this very thin blue line where we can see the back of our ribbon over the top of the front of our ribbon. And that's very easy to fix. Let's just go back to our mat and let's go to our ribbon two, which is the back. I'm even gonna change the name so that's not too confusing. And then all we need to do is go down to our geometry options and let's just take down our extrusion depth slightly. So let's just take it down by two. So that does annoyingly take off the bottom, as you'll see if I bring this all the way back down to zero, it comes from the top down. So if we leave that at say 298, we can then hopefully just nudge down the position slightly. Let's see if two pixels is enough. Go back to our ribbon. And that was enough, so there we go. So what I also like to do sometimes actually is to negate what we've just done but if we go back to our mat layer go to ribbon and then let's on our extrusion depth on the front let's bring that right down so quite significantly so maybe to 260 from the 300 that it was originally at and then let's change the position down slightly so it has a white border at the top and bottom something like that then go back to our main ribbon and we will have a border on the front of our ribbon. And that's it. Now you know how to create this animated ribbon with text in After Effects. If you found this helpful, please like the video and subscribe for more tutorials. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.